Condition of a repair on a BMW M54 engine, which is found in the 3 Series and the 5 Series. A year ago, which is very common with these engines, is they, they can overheat. And this one overheated in the head warp, so I took the head off, milled it, flattened it, and did a total top-end job on it. After I put it back together is um, we had a leak. Now, one of the things that we did differently on this engine is to replace the studs, which often strip out on an overheated engine, is I use the Hewn Solutions inserts, and they held great. I have a lot of positive things to say about them. None of them stripped out. The process worked well. They're a little bit more expensive than the time certs, but it seemed to be a good value. It's kind of a one-time repair, but none have ever failed on me. However, after I put it all back together, I had an oil leak, and I've replaced all of the standard parts in this engine, which is the head gasket, obviously, the gasket that goes around the, um, the valve cover gasket. There's a gasket back here on the back side of the, of the oil housing, or the oil filter housing that leaks. That has been replaced. Way down below is the, uh, is the, uh, the, the valve cover, not the valve cover, the crankcase gasket, you know, the, the oil pan, sorry. So that had to be replaced, replace that. It's kind of a pain in the butt because you have to drop the subframe and everything else. Replaced every gasket I could think of, but it was still dripping, uh, leaking a lot of oil. The oil looked like it was coming from actually the, um, the engine mount. Now, obviously it can't come from the engine mount, but it looked like it was coming from behind the engine part bracket or engine mount bracket. So net net is I pulled that thing off and I discovered the source of the leak. So there was a lot of puddling down here. Here's where the engine bracket goes or the engine mount goes. There's a lot of puddling in here of oil. Sorry, I have a flashlight battery going dead. There was puddling up here as well. And if you look very carefully, I'm gonna try to zoom in on this, you can see there is a crack. So I'm gonna try to get my finger on it right there. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see, you can see where that crack lies. And that crack lies between the number three and the number four cylinder. Here's the number three cylinder, here's the number four cylinder, and this line is either an oil feed line or an oil return line. I'm not sure which it is. I suspect it's an oil feed line. And, uh, and so with that crack right there, as you can see, oil was seeping out, running from here down into here, into here, and it would ultimately drip down behind the mount for the uh, for the engine, the engine mount bracket, and it looks like it was coming out of the engine pan. So anyway, I discovered it. I suspect the reason being is that the inserts drive kind of into uh, into this area, and with all the additional stress on the system, is I suspect you just started to see the separation when you uh, you know you crack the block when you overheat aluminum, and this engine had been overheated is um, the, the aluminum becomes brittle, which is one of the reasons you have to put the inserts in the aluminum to begin with. The block's getting a little bit of brittle and, uh, and that's the reason it had failed. So as a solution, we're just gonna clean that out and use the standard process of JB Weld. We'll clean it out, we'll grind it out, we'll clean it with acetone and everything else that we can think of um, and hope that holds up. All of the other uh, similar videos online when people try to fix oil leaks with JB Weld. If it's done properly, it seems to work well and it's certainly much easier than replacing the entire engine um, or replacing the block. So anyway, it was kind of a bugger to diagnose because you had to, uh, to, to find it. You had to have the engine running for the leak to occur under pressure. Um, but to have the engine running, you couldn't actually see it. So you had to actually pull off this um, head gasket, I mean the intake manifold. One other slight learning, and when you pull off that head, uh, the manifold or the intake manifold, pulling off the fuel rail is kind of a pain in the butt. This one I never, uh, I, I never took off the fuel rail. We just disconnected most of the electrical and pulled it back and tied it back and it gives you plenty of access. So if you're looking at an easier way to go change some of those head gasket or, or intake um, 
gaskets. That's uh, That might be a way to save you 10 or 15 minutes. So there you go. Anyway, it's not a common leak, but if you are still having a leaking issue specifically after you've replaced your head gasket and done inserts, that might be the possible cause. Now, let me show you specifically how we fixed it. We're going to zoom into the crack here one more time. The next step is to drill a small, roughly a two millimeter hole at each end of the crack. That will reduce the stress risers that naturally occur at the end of any crack and it prevents further propagation. After we do that, there you can see the cracks. After we do that, then we're going to actually clean that groove out a little bit with a Dremel tool so that it has something better to adhere to and then go in with about a 60 grit sandpaper and some buffing tools and clean it out as much as possible keep it rough and then the final stage is i filled it with jb weld marine weld i specifically use the marine weld as it's designed for aluminum applications so hopefully this holds i will follow up in a couple of months to let you know how everything worked